Hey everyone, my name is Chris Khoury and I'm a solution architect at the Amazon Selling Partner API team. Today, we have another exciting topic for you. We're going to show you how to configure the Sample Solution app for SP API, but this time for a new use case. For folks who are not aware, the Sample Solution app provides all required resources to deploy a fully functional SP API application to the AWS cloud. You can use this application to test the proposed solution, do changes, and or integrate it to your own product. Now this specific workflow is a fulfillment outbound workflow. It consists of three sub-workflows, which are creating an order, canceling an order, and tracking an order's packages. For creating an order, the flow consists of getting a fulfillment preview to identify the options available for a given order. After that, creating an order in the hold status then fetching it to confirm its details are correct. And finally, updating an order to ship status so it can proceed to be fulfilled. Canceling an order is simple and consists of a single step. Finally, for tracking an order's packages, this flow consists of two steps. We start by getting an order to retrieve its package numbers, then call the get package tracking details operation to get the shipping information specific to a given package. Great. We now understand at a high level the use cases we will be tackling. So, let's get started. After cloning from GitHub, open the project in the editor of your choice. The main file to look into is the readme file under the app folder. It contains all the needed steps to configure, deploy, and test the solution. Now, let's start by configuring the solution, and to do so, we will be updating the config file. Don't worry, it's easier than it sounds, and here's what you'll need to do. Open the app.config file that can be located under the same app directory, and make sure to fill in all the attributes with your app's credentials, starting with the client ID, client secret, refresh token, and the region code you'll be operating in. And that's it for step 1. But wait, there's more. Step 2 is all about configuring the Sample Solutions app's IAM user you will need to create an IAM user with the right permissions. A detailed description of the steps to do so can be found in the readme file. You can also find the policy that you can directly attach to this IAM user. We also have a step-by-step -step video tutorial that will be linked in this video's description. Great, after creating the IAM user with the right permissions and getting this user's credentials, we are done with this step. We have successfully configured the Sample Solution app for SP API give yourself a pat on the back. Now, for the exciting part, we will dive into executing the deployment script for the Sample Solution app. We will start by locating the deployment script. We can find it under app scripts java. The name of the script would be javaapp.sh, and the javaappclean.sh is another deployment script that can be used to clean up the deployment after you're done. We will go ahead and run it. Here, we provide the access key of the IAM user with the permissions we just created, as well as the secret key. We provide the default region name, in this case US East 1, and the default output, which is JSON. And we wait for the Java sample solution to be deployed. Congrats! Our script has been deployed. It's as easy as that. Now, it's time to put the fulfillment outbound sample solution app to the test. Let's head to the AWS console. We can check the status of the deployment by heading to the cloud formation. And you can see here that creation is still in progress. To track detailed events that are occurring, we can go to the events tab and check all the AWS services that are being created. Here, we can see the cloud formation stack has been successfully completed. Now, in order to test the solution, we will be sending some dummy notifications through the simple queue service and check the results. We go ahead and search for SQS and head to the SQS console. As you can see here, we have three different notification queues, one for cancel, one for creating an order, and one for tracking details. If we head back to the readme file, we can find some sample notifications to test the overall solution. If we scroll to step 4, test the sample solution, we're gonna go ahead and test the create order workflow. Here, you can find the dummy notification payload that you can post in the queue. Make sure to replace all the attributes with the relevant information. For example, replace the name and address with the right name and address, as well as items, seller SQU, and so on. 
We will go ahead and copy this payload. Head back to the console. Go to the create notification queue. Send and receive messages. And we will paste the notification payload in the message body. Then click on send. To check the results, we're going to head to the step functions dashboard. We refresh and see that one execution is already running. If we click on it, you can see that it has been successfully executed. Here you can see the different sub steps within this workflow, such as preview order, create order, get order, and update order. On the right panel, you can find different input and output information across different states within the step function workflow. Also, please check the documentation for more information about what each API returns. Amazing! We have created an order and updated the fulfillment status. Let's head back to the second use case. Going back to the readme file, the workflow is the cancel order workflow. As you can see here, we also have a sample notification payload in order to process. Of course, you will be replacing the seller fulfillment order ID with the appropriate data. We will go ahead and copy this, head back to the SQS dashboard, go back to the queues, and then head to the cancel notification queue. Similar to the create order, we're gonna go and send and receive messages, enter the message payload, send message. Let's go back to the step functions dashboard. We're gonna go to the cancel state machine, And as you can see, the execution has been successfully processed. Here, as well, you can find the input and output of the related API call. Again, don't forget to replace the order ID with the order ID you would like to cancel. Amazing, we just cancelled the order. Lastly, we will move to our get package tracking details workflow. In order to receive notifications, we must first complete our one step of subscribing to notifications. In order to do this, navigate to the Lambda console and enter the Lambda title SPAPI Subscribe Notifications Lambda function. There, we can go to the Test tab and insert the Subscribe to Notifications body in the Event JSON text area. To get this JSON, we also included a test event payload. Make sure to replace the refresh token and the region code with the applicable values. We're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it here. After pasting, go ahead and click on test. Congrats, the execution has been successfully processed. You are now subscribed to receive fulfillment order status notifications. Now, for the package tracking details stack, we do not need to trigger our queue to activate the stack but rather our subscription will send a notification to our SPAPI tracking details notifications queue when there is an update to a package being shipped. This is the gold standard use case. However, we do also supply a notification body in the readme file if one wishes to trigger the stack manually. In order to test it, we can go back to the SQS dashboard and select the tracking details notifications queue. Go again to send and receive messages and in the readme file, as mentioned, we do have a test payload. Again, make sure to replace the order ID with the relevant order ID. Go ahead and copy it. Paste it in the message body. Click send. To check the results, we're going to head back to the step functions dashboard. Go to the tracking details state machine. And there we can see there is a running execution. Amazing. The execution was also successfully processed. Now this is all I had for you today. We went over the three workflows from the fulfillment outbound sample solution. We went through the creation of an order, then cancellation of an order, and finally tracking the order package numbers. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe for more SPAPI related videos. And happy coding from all of us at Amazon Selling Partner API.